let's keep working through the features of Millar's commodity model of sex. So here, let's explore nice guys and rejection within the commodity model. So a lot of folks have heard the term nice guy before. It means a guy who is ostensibly pretty nice. He's often friends with women. He is helpful and kind and supportive. He's oh the one who insists on walking his women friends home from the bar if they're kind of lit, just to make sure they get home safe. He is there for them when they go through breakups or have relationship drama. And then eventually it starts to emerge that he believes he's owed sex for doing all of these things. He might not put that belief into words, and if you were if you were asked about it, he probably would deny having such a gross view. But his actions show that this is how he's thinking about ooh, entitlement, and specifically entitlement to sex. So at some point, possibly while walking that drunk friend home, he makes a move or asks her out. Hopefully she's able to respond and hopefully he listens. But if she turns him down, he usually responds with anger and maybe with aggression. He talks about how unfair it is that she rejected him, how he's been used by this friendship. And it becomes clear that it wasn't actually a friendship at all, even though it might have sort of felt like one. Instead, this was a set of hoops that this guy thought he had to jump through and that having done that, he believes he's now owed sexual access to these women's bodies. So nice guys believe that having paid their dues, they're now entitled to sex or relationships. And this absolutely both buys into and reinforces the commodity model of sex. So for a moment, let's pause and talk about actual commodities, not sex. So if you are a business person and you draw up a contract that you then enter into with someone, so long as you fulfill your end of the contract, the other person is supposed to uphold their end. If you do the required things, you are owed what the other person committed to provide. And if they don't, then they've backed out of the deal. They've done something wrong and you rightfully get to be angry. Right? On a smaller scale, think about ordering food from like a takeout place. Um, so you look at the menu, you place your order. When it's ready, you go up to the counter, you pull out some money and you say, hi, I had order number 86. You hand over your money and you get your food. That should all work fine. You did all the required things and now you get your food. And if the cashier just says no and refuses to hand over the food, that would be really weird and it Appropriate. Like the cashier sounds like they're being just an absolute asshole. And you'd be right to be confused and pissed off by that. And while it's not a great idea, it would be understandable and maybe reasonable if you just dropped your cash on the counter, took your food, and went away. Well, nice guys who are adhering to the commodity model of sex adopt that same mindset when it comes to sexual interactions. Under the commodity model of sex, so long as the guys do the right things, as long as they are properly polite or friendly or minimally decent, then under this model, they deserve sex and sexual relationships. They did all the necessary steps, they jumped through all the necessary hoops, and now they're entitled to sex or sexual access to another person's body. And if the woman doesn't have sex with them or doesn't enter into this relationship with them, then she has broken the deal. She has wronged them under this model. She did something inappropriate by saying no. Now, this does several things. First, it characterizes saying no as an asshole move. So it legitimizes calling her a bitch. It legitimizes viewing her as mean and cruel. Second, it shifts the moral calculus so that by saying no, she's viewed as breaking her end of the contract. And so now it's the nice guy who's really the one who has been hurt or wronged here, right? Because she broke the contract. She didn't hold up her end of the deal. So rejection then is viewed as a wrong that is done to the person who's being rejected. 
under the commodity model of sex, so long as he's gone through the necessary steps, this guy is now entitled to sex. So if sex is a commodity and nice guys are entitled to sex, uh, then this view views rape as merely repossession of something that the guy was already entitled to. As Millar notes, under the commodity model of sex, rape is viewed as a property crime. And if the woman already belonged to another man, then it's a property crime against him. So that's horrifying. Um, and yet this view is just pervasive in our world. Under this view, it's justified. Sexual assault is justified in response to that rejection. This is basically the view that incels have. So incel stands for involuntary celibate, and it's primarily an online community, mostly made up of cis, straight, largely but not exclusively white men. Elliot Roger is probably the most well-known of the incels. Um, some of you might've heard of him. He's also commonly referred to as the Isla Vista killer. So he was a college student who was angry that women at his college, and specifically women within the sororities, weren't having sex with him. And so he recorded a very long YouTube manifesto, and then he drove to nearby sororities, and he shot and murdered six people, and he shot and injured 14 others um, because he thought that he was owed sex. He thought that he was entitled um, to sex and that he had been unjustly denied something to which he was entitled. He thought he was in the right throughout all of this. And that's horrifying. But I want to be careful that we're not holding up Elliot Roger as if his thinking is somehow unique or as if he was holding some kind of extreme view. He wasn't. Right before he went on this murder spree, People saw what he had been saying on YouTube. He had been posting these manifestos. A few people were concerned enough to alert the police, and the police showed up at his front door and talked to him about what he had been posting. The police officer then shook his hand and walked away. The officer said that he thought Elliot Roger was a nice young man. Elliot Roger had not particularly hidden his views, and that is exactly the point. His mindset was treated as normal because it's so pervasive and widespread. He didn't need to hide it from those police officers because it was viewed as standard, as something that a nice young man might believe. So Roger made headlines because of the way he acted on this view, but the view itself is ridiculously widespread and pervasive. So other people hold it in just the same form, and other people also act on it in ways both large and small all the time. But unless the body count is high, our world doesn't treat it as noteworthy because this mindset isn't exceptional. And this gets especially clear when we start thinking about rejection. So in the nice guy and incel mindset, they're not quite the same, but they both draw on the commodity model. Within this mindset, rejection is a wrong done to the person who's being rejected. It's a slight. And it's reasonable to get angry if one is rejected under this view. So Elliot Roger thought that he had been wronged because he wasn't getting the sex to which he believed he was entitled. So anger at rejection is unfortunately common Women and gender expansive folks are especially likely to have experience of this and might have had to learn strategies to avoid having to explicitly turn people down, especially to avoid having to turn cis men down. Or they might have had to learn strategies to turn them down gently and carefully. So, I'm flattered but I have a boyfriend is a common one that women often use. But notice how it works by signaling that there's another guy who already has property rights over her and how this fits into the commodity model by calling on other men to respect that man's property. But no matter how carefully they do it, every single year there are reports of women, girls, and gender expansive folks who are murdered and assaulted 
by the people they turn down every year. Notice also how this violence is connected to norms of idealized masculinity in which men are taught that they need to be sexually dominant and aggressive, especially towards women, that a man's worth is determined by how much he's been able to sexually access a woman's body, how much he's scored, and that men should respond with aggression when slighted or wrong. Right? So this anger, and especially the violence in the face of rejection, is a taught response. It's something that we are teaching. It's something that we are instilling in people. It is not innate, and it is not inevitable. We need to change the way we think about sex and rejection. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to find rejection fun or just brush it off. If you're rejected, it's okay to be sad. Presumably, you asked someone out because you liked them. It's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to be kind of mopey or to need to go binge watch some ridiculous TV show. It's okay to do like some kinds of self-care, to attend to ah, being sad or disappointed because you really put yourself out there. But it's not okay to be angry. It's not okay to vilify people who just said no or to talk shit about how they're such a bitch and you didn't really like them anyway. It's not okay to be violent or respond with aggression towards somebody who said no. And it's not okay to try to wear them down, to keep pressing until they give up and say yes. Because they're a person and people get to make choices about what happens to and with their own bodies as well as about what kinds of interactions or relationships they want to engage in. We need to massively rethink the way that we approach rejection. This is one of the most fucked up things I'll probably ever say, but in our current world, rejection is a huge compliment. It means that the person feels safe and comfortable enough to say no. Unfortunately, we live in this just deeply non-ideal world, and it's just not always the case that people are able to say no. So rejection is an extension of trust. Trust that the person will hear it and that they won't respond dangerously. Rejection is a compliment. And we need to start thinking about it as just a feature of daily life. If you ask folks out, sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no. That's just part of life. That is what it means for each individual to have sexual agency, to get to make these choices for themselves. And the more we can understand and recognize that rejection is normal, that it's not an insult, that it's not a slight, and that it's not breaking a deal, then the better off our sexual and romantic interactions can be, as well as all of our other interactions in our daily lives.